Hi everybody, in this episode of Gaffer and Gear, I'm gonna be running you through how I test power outlets. So one of the first things I do when I get to a location is I find where the power outlets are and I plug this little tester in. So um, in this video though, I could not find one single power outlet in my entire house that was um, in a good position to film. They were either behind cabinets, behind beds, or just on awkward angles. So uh, in this video, we're gonna pretend that this is a power outlet on a wall. Okay, so power outlet testers are really cheap. You can get them at uh, hardware stores, electrical wholesalers, you can even buy them on eBay. But what I would suggest is spend a little bit more money and get one of these combination units. So the top half is the polarity tester, which basically makes sure that uh, whoever put our power outlet into the wall wired the connections around the correct way, that it is actually safe to use. And the bottom half of this uh, combination tester it tests our safety switches, which are also called residual current devices, RCDs, or earth leakage circuit breakers. So different names depending on where you are in the world. So one of these combination units is, is well worth the money. So the first thing I do when I get into a house or a location is I go looking for the power outlets because I have to plug into them. And uh, when I'm doing that, I carry this around with me and plug in. So um, let's have a look. Let's plug it into our, to our power here. Now, uh, these units have um, different lights. Um, and on the units, there'll be a, a corresponding, um, you know, what, what that means, you know, what the two lights mean. So having these two lights illuminated and this one not illuminated, according to the instructions here, means that this is correctly wired up, that this, this outlet is uh, safe to use. If anything else comes up, don't plug into that outlet. Okay, it really is that simple. There is only one exception, and that is plugging into portable generator sets portable generator sets will tell you that there's no earth connection. And this is normal and this is actually safe to use and that's to do with the way that generators, small generators generate the electricity. But when you're plugging into house power, anything other than correct or okay on your tester, don't use that outlet. Now, later on in the video, we'll talk about common misperceptions that I'm hearing from younger gaffers about. Um, they think that different, different results mean you can run different lights Basically, if it's not correct or okay, you don't plug into it. Now, the bottom half, the um, safety switch tester. Now, on the dial here are different settings, and that's your, your milliamps. So it's testing how responsive your safety switch is. And this is important to know if you're a gaffer, particularly if you're running HMIs, okay? But before we get into testing it, you've got to have a bit of brains about you about when it is appropriate to test your safety switch, okay? so. If you test the safety switch and the safety switch works, the power's gonna turn off. So have some sense. So for example, if you're working in an office block and there are hundreds of people at their computer consoles working away and you hit the test button and the power turns off, you are gonna be the most unpopular man in that building at that present point in time. You know, dumb. Um, if you're working in a, in a shopping center, you know, don't press test if you think it's gonna turn, um, uh, turn off the cash registers, okay? Um, another thing too is, and I had a young assistant do this, he got very excited, he bought one of these and he plugged it in and pressed the test button. We didn't know where the fuse box was. So he turned the power off and we couldn't find the fuse box to turn it back on. So you've got to have a little bit of sense about when you turn these on or when you test, okay? So there's an appropriate time to test and not an appropriate time to test. Now, in the circumstances where I can't test because it's not appropriate, that's when I use portable inline safety switches, okay? Now, let's put this uh, thing through its paces and have a look. All right, so I always start with it set to minimums and then press, um, press the test button. Now, at uh, 10 milliamps, I'm hoping it actually doesn't fire up if I need to run HMI, so let's have a look. Okay, so nothing happened. Now, that's good because if it tripped at 10, uh, 10 milliamps, when I go to start up a HMI, the RCD is going to get a false trip because the capacitors that store the power in the, in the HMI ballast, um, they're going to have a, a 10 milliamp uh, loss momentarily and the safety switch is going to read that as being a possible uh, electrocution and turn the system off. Now, click up to 15, press test. Fingers crossed it doesn't happen again. Now, at 15 um, uh, milliamps, um, I can get HMIs to work. It, is a pro it, it can be problematic. So, 
it might take more than one go to get the HMI to start. So I might have to get a bit of power into the capacitors over multiple goes and then get the HMI to fire up. So um, it's not the end of the world, but it is a problem. Whereas at 10, if it trips at 10, I'm gonna to have to get my power off portable generators or something like that. Okay, 20 milliamps and up, you definitely want it to be tripping, okay? So uh, 35 is the uh, maximum in Australia that's allowed. Um, it should trip by then. If it doesn't trip, um, a couple of options. One, if it doesn't trip all the way up to 35, the, you don't have a safety switch on that circuit. That's option, that's possibility number one. Possibility number two is that the safety switch doesn't work, which is why you're testing it. Possibility number three, and this is something you should always bear in mind, this might be faulty and not working. Okay, so um, I always test my one regularly. So at home here, once a month, I'll um, test it, make sure it works. Okay, so I don't want to be out on set trying to diagnose a problem that doesn't exist. Okay, so now we're at 20, uh, 20 uh, milliamps. Let's hit the button and uh, see what happens. Okay, so if you're not following what happened there, the uh, safety switch responded to the tester and it turned the power circuit off and my key light was on the same circuit, so I got plunged into darkness. All right, now let's talk about uh, misperceptions that people have, or some gaffers have, about uh, the readings that you can get on this. If the active and the neutral are reverse polarized, uh, which is one of the most common faults you will come across, and that's basically because um, whoever owns the house you're shooting in didn't want to pay for an electrician to replace the power outlet, they thought they'd do it themselves and they got the cables the wrong way around. Um, one of the other big misperceptions is it doesn't matter which way the active and the neutral is, everything still runs. Now this is absolutely true. So we've just got a, a very basic diagram here. Um, this is the wall and this is the power outlet here on the wall. We've got the active, which is the uh, side that the, um, which is where the power comes in off the grid. And we've got the neutral, which is the, com the completion of the circuit. So if you've got the active on one side, you know, it goes, feeds, your power, feeds all the lights and equipment on your set and then goes back down the neutral. Okay, now uh, the logic is if it's reversed, exactly the same thing's happening. Okay, so now we've got it reversed. Okay, so the electricity comes out through the active, back and loops through through the neutral. Everything turns on on your set as before, um, makes no difference. Well, there is one key difference. Um, there is something missing from the diagram at this side. Okay, and that is your switch. Now your power switch is hooked in to what should be the active. Okay, so let's do the diagram again, and this time with a switch. This time we've got our active, our power switch in the off position, and our wall outlet. Now if we've got the switch in the off position, the electricity gets to here and stops. But what if our active and neutral are around the other way? Now if our active and neutral are around the other way, the power comes out of the wall outlet, so it comes out of the outlet, then loops through the set, and then goes back to the neutral, where it is then disconnected. So at this point, in this, uh, the way this is set up, all the lights and everything that's uh, running on your set doesn't turn on, because you don't have a completed power circuit because it's turned off at this point. However, you still have electricity, you still have voltage on your set. So let's uh, paint a picture of where that could be really, really bad. So let's say um, you're shooting in a backyard and you're plugged into a power outlet and just out of nowhere, it starts bucketing down with rain. So somebody runs over to the power outlet, switches it off, all of the lights and everything electronic on set turn off and everybody thinks the power is disconnected and it is safe to now touch the wet equipment. So this could be potentially lethal. Now this is where things can get really dangerous if you've got your active and neutral the wrong way around, and that is changing light globes, particularly anything that's got an Edison screw mount. Now there's two problems here. Number one is uh, if the power's the wrong way around, you've got the um, active on the neutral, the switch doesn't work. The switch is on the wrong side of the circuit. So even in the off position, there is still power coming, going into my connector here. Now the second problem, and this is really problematic with uh, Edison screws, is the active is meant to be here, okay? Deep inside the socket, you know, where it's well insulated. But because it's the wrong way around, the active is now on the screw thread here, which can accidentally be touched when you're putting the light globe in.
Okay, so that's a power outlet tester. It's a handy thing to have in your kit and it could save somebody's life and it costs next to nothing. I'm Andrew Locke. See you on the next episode of Gaffering Gear.